And Bully, it's interesting. He said he went to Shawn Michaels and was like, I want to be the guy. Now, somebody that's only been in the business two and a half years is talking to one of the greatest of all time, said, give me the ball, coach. I know I can do it. Now, Bully, in a lot of ways, it almost sounds like a no-brainer, but also, if you get that ball, as Shawn Michaels said to him, hey, a lot of people ask for the ball, and then they fumble it. You know, it's probably, sometimes some people probably want to stay under the radar for a little bit till they know that they're ready, but it sounds like Trick Williams always knew he was ready, and he showed it last night. No, I think last night was the line of scrimmage where Trick was handed the ball. Now let's see if he'll fumble it. Interesting. Last, okay. Last night was him giving the ball. Okay. You came to me and you said you wanted the shot. We've built you up to the point where the people are very much behind you. You got your shot last night. We handed you the ball. Now what are you going to do with it? Some guy, Will he have his Tony Dorsett moment where he goes for 99 yards and scores a touchdown? Or will he get his clock cleaned next week and fumble the ball? I'm not saying he's going to. I'm just saying last night is the handing of the ball. Getting him there, building up a baby face and getting them there is not nearly as difficult, in my opinion, as keeping the people invested in the baby face and keeping him there. Uh, what I always tell people and tell, you know, especially, you know, people that are coming into a company right off the bat where even if they're as much as an extra or somebody taking a bump for somebody, um, you're a player. I'm not asking you to score a touchdown. I'm asking you to give me two yards. That's all I'm asking you. Or if I'm the running back, my star running back needs some a breather, uh, go out there and block. That's all. Um, and why I say that is he went through that. If you really think about Trick Williams, the he was the sidekick for Carmelo Hayes. If you want to go back to your past, Sean and Diesel. Sean and Diesel. Sean was the worker. Diesel was the big guy behind him that did the damage. Every time they handed Trick the ball, he never fumbled it. And once they had their storylines, I mean, it's Mike times. It's so many different things of never fumbling it where you go out there and you prove that, hey, I can be the guy. The whoop that trick got very, very over, very, very popular. And now it's instead of handing me the ball, give me two yards, win me the Super Bowl, carry this team. These are things that have happened it's through the course of time. And think of like also Shawn Michaels Diesel. When that split turned, though it was different because Shawn went babyface, Diesel became the heel. But Diesel was also kind of the champ. And the Diesel character was elevated. And then from the Diesel character, Kevin Nash was elevated. So, I mean, there's all these just different uses and examples throughout the, the course of time, but also throughout the course of Shawn Michaels' time. And it, it, it's a great comparison because Carmelo Hayes was the the worker, the talker. I mean, did Shawn Michaels need somebody to stand behind him? No. But at the time in the industry, it was extra heat for him. Trick was a heater, and now Trick is the man. And I'm guessing, guys, and, and Bully, I'll ask you first, there's pressure on Trick Williams, but it's not an insurmountable amount of pressure, meaning that you know, NXT is very rarely on the road. You're not trying to sell tickets to fill an arena. You're mostly wrestling in front of the same crowd each and every week. And those fans are already behind you. They're in your corner. They want you to do well. Now, it is live TV each and every week. So there are going to be the pressures. But I would think, Bully, that with the support system that Trick has, even though he's only been in the business two and a half years, those are the key ingredients that are going to help Trick succeed in the future, right? As long as they're chanting whoop that Trick, Trick will be fine in the fans' eyes. If I'm a, if I'm a guy like Trick, I want to fight from underneath. Any good babyface knows that they should always put themselves in a position to fight from underneath so the fans have more reason to cheer from them. A babyface who just goes out there and kicks ass really doesn't work. You know, even the best baby faces in the world, Austin, he's a straight up ass kicker, but he always put himself in situations where he had to fight back and always fought back. Um, Trick is over with the fans. Now it's going to, Trick in my mind now has to get over 
with the higher ups. They have to see enough of him to where they go, all right, we put the NXT championship on him. We handed him the ball. He has done very well with it. His matches have gotten better. His promos have gotten better. The fans chant for him even louder if that's possible. Okay, we have something strong for him on the main roster. Let's bring him up now, plug him in, and see it as it Because the object in the WWE is not just to stay great in NXT. It's to constantly move up the ladder of success, make more money, hire up on the card, and become a worldwide draw for the company. Now, it's interesting, too, Tommy, because as much as we're saying, hey, here's the ball, win us the Super Bowl, you're now the face of NXT, it also shows that, yes, we love you, we think you're talented, you have the goods, but you're not ready for prime time, meaning being on the main roster. Because most likely, if it would have lost that match last night, that was them saying, all right, you're ready to be drafted, go on to a SmackDown or a Raw. But that's also showing, even though he's the NXT champion, that he's not quite ready to move on to the main roster, correct? Uh, no. I feel it's where do you fit in? Uh, honestly, Cameron Grimes. Was there anyone ever hotter than Cameron Grimes in NXT? No. And he was as hot as hot could be when he was a part of NXT. Then he gets called up and what? Nothing. He was He was let go, unfortunately. Trick, where would Trick fit in as a babyface? Does Raw or SmackDown, I mean, the draft, you really need to plan what you're going to do, but does WWE need baby faces right now? Do they need people jumping out of their seats uh, for a talent? Yes, they have uh, Yeet. So they have so many, ba- Miz, our truth Cody, like where would this person fit in? And then you don't want to lose somebody who's a special talent. And you don't want to have that result. Oh, we called him up and that eh, didn't work out. So, Tommy, as a person who has the experience that you have in WWE where you were in talent relations. Now, I know it was a long time ago. It was under the Vince regime. But of the three people on this show right now, you have the most experience with why or why not certain people get called up let go we can all agree that cameron grimes is extremely talented we were all fans in your opinion based on what you know of how the company does business why do you think a cameron grimes gets let go um i don't know that and i mean also here's another part of it's a whole i I know you don't know specifically no no no. i'm saying i don't know i don't know how it falls to i mean if you look at him he he's not overly muscular he's he when you stripped him down out of that gimmick where he was a millionaire and you you took away that mic time he was always and will always be a great wrestler but when you strip him down he was just a guy in trunks and boots with long hair and how does that get over with WWE and they only gave him certain short mic time and no storyline when they called him up same Honestly, the same with the the tag team that brought that got called up. They were the NXT Women's Champions and tag champs, and now they're like background witches and appear somewhere. It's I've said this all the time. Don't wish to get called up because if they don't have great creative plans for you, you're going to get lost in the sauce. Well, that's and, gospel. Uh, Brom Breaker, you know his call up. I was just like, why are you calling up somebody now? where he's not fitting into WrestleMania, he's not fitting into these plans, don't let this special talent get lost. And he won't because he is so, so good. But, you know, there's placeholders. And when I say a placeholder, we talked about it before. Nakamura versus Cody was a placeholder for where can Cody go before we really got to push him. This, like, Braun, eh, let's bring him up. But what's what's he done since he got called up? He's had a couple of you know, impactful debuts, a couple of uh, wins. I like the storyline of where you're going to go. I would have done that for the draft or leading up to the draft um, or made him like a number one draft pick. If you go back and watch that first draft that ever happened, you could tell who we're going to push and who we're not going to push. I mean, even you guys, you got split up. They, They had plans on pushing the both of you as singles people. 
um, you and Devon. And uh, it, it's just. No, you... that's not true. Okay. Out of Vince McMahon's mouth, the reason why he split up me and Devon is he wanted to do something extremely shocking in the draft and splitting us up. I don't think that there were any real plans for the Reverend or hardcore Bubba. We, it, the, the, the main reason why he just wanted to do something shocking. All right. I, I'm just. I just wanted to give you, like, you know, the honest reason. Like, it wasn't like, okay, we're going to split them up because we're going to make Devon the Intercontinental Champion and Bubba the, uh, you know, World Champion or whatever like that. It was done for shock value and shock value only. So, so you're saying, bully, like, all right, we want to shock the people, but you really, they, he really didn't have a plan after that shock. So it was, it was almost destined for failure then because you were just doing it for the moment, right? The best thing that come. Listen, I did fine on my own. I, I, I'm quite happy with my little hardcore run. We had a lot of fun, yada, yada. The person who benefited most from this was Batista because they put Batista with Devon and look at what happened with Batista. He went on to become one of the biggest stars in the company. So some positive came out of it. Hey, there was also a And a I moment. think, Tommy, what you said about Cameron Grimes is very honest and true. When you strip down uh, a talent, as they've stripped down Cameron Grimes, then you're asking yourself, what do I really have here? What do I have to build on? I would have loved to have seen them do a modern day version of Jimmy Boogie Woogie Valiant with Cameron Grimes on the main roster. Look at an Otis, how entertaining he is. Look at how entertaining uh, Truth has been for, for 25 plus years. You do that Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant from back in the day, you know, uh, the kid from New York City or life's been good to me so far. This, you know, this rags to riches story, whatever it was with Cameron Grimes. He's got all the girls. He's got all the money, but he dresses you know, like a hobo, whatever. I think that would be endearing. I think that's good, you know, um, uh, comedy relief for a show at times. That's what I would have did. Or give people vignettes to help build them. Um, you know, there was also one point and it didn't really pan out. But when you said, hey uh let's try it there was i don't know if it was an agent or if it was vince and they were like we're gonna let a bunch of people go and then someone said but they're very very talented and it was like cool let's give them three weeks and they all got called up uh to the ecw brand mainly and they literally give them three weeks and it's three weeks to get over and some failed well most failed um but it was either hey, let's see what we got here, or we're just going to let him go. You see, now, in my opinion, if you're going to do something like that, you have to give people a fair shot of getting over. So if I'm going to say, okay, let's give them three weeks, well, then I'm going to ha give them one match, I'm going to give them one promo, and I'll give them one, I, I don't know, backstage segment in which they can go out there and say the things they need to say. Because if you're going to give somebody three weeks to get over and you're going to write for them, but what you're writing isn't strong, well, how the hell are they going to get over? Yeah. Well, I mean, it, they were getting very... fired anyway, so at least they gave them the TV time just to see. Uh, okay. If that's and they the did do that. Lining. They did. They gave them all like, I mean, it was a, it was a thing. Uh, it was a It was a quick thing. But you're but you're right because you know it's almost like I forgot that they're that were there like Alba Fire and Isla Dawn, like why did they move them to the main roster? They haven't done anything with Alba Fire and Isla Dawn since they've been moved to the main roster. So and then took why the tag championship? But, I mean, Again, but I'm it saying, was but, different, but it was different regime, right? Hopefully, it all changes. Uh, same thing uh, with Pretty Deadly. Same thing. Like, like Pretty Deadly was getting pretty hot. In NXT, they move them to the main roster. I haven't really done anything with them. Dave, uh, I'm going to give you an example here. Tell me if, uh, maybe Tommy too, but Dave, this is more a music question. Me, Dolph, and Jericho were texting yesterday about the new Motley Crue song coming out. And, and I know that I can tell if I like a song within like the first five seconds. And Jericho said, turned around and he said, I'll know by the opening riff if I like the song or not. Okay, you're shaking your head no already. Yeah. You're not a big preponderant of that? No, nah, no, nah, not at all. Okay, so uh, you want to hear the entire song to make not sure. Not only that, I want to, I, I'm sorry not to interrupt, but like I want to I wanna hear the song and then I want to hear it again tomorrow. And then I want to hear it again 
a week from now. Like some of my favorite songs and albums, I didn't like the first time I heard it. So, you know, and you know this bully, there's, there's certain things, maybe even shows and movies. The first time you watch it, eh, but then you watch it again and, oh, actually, I like that. You I know? agree with you because music-wise, the, the Motley album with John Karabi took me 10 years to like. And then that movie, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe, which I walked out of on the movie theater, now I never turn it off when it's on because now I get the movie. So I understand what you're saying. But sometimes the WWE looks at an act the same way some people listen to music. If you don't cook me within the first five seconds... Forget it. I'm done. I don't want it. And with the speed in which the WWE runs, it's like get over or get out. So you take a Pretty Deadly, for instance. They put them on TV one time, and if their eyes, they don't like what they see immediately. They don't like what they hear immediately. It's like, eh, I already heard the opening riff of this song. I'm not really on board. I'm not going to throw the song away, but let's put it on the back burner for now. And I, and I understand that. And I'll just use Cameron Grimes because that's who everyone's talking about. Because, my God, if you saw the video he posted yesterday that he filmed right after he got the phone call that he was released, it's heartbreaking. But, like, a guy like Cameron Grimes, and I think going back to your point, Tommy, if there's not a story behind him or you don't – if there's not a series of vignettes before you have him debut, when Cram, Cameron Grimes walks out there – no no disrespect. He doesn't look like anything special. You know, like a Braun Breaker, you're like, holy shit, look at that guy. And also, you know, you know his family ties. But Cameron Grimes, unless there's a story or some kind of character arc, he just looks like another guy. So does Sami Zayn. Yeah, but Sami Zayn, did Sami Zayn hit immediately the, Doesn't the matter. moment they he still went gave out there? It time. But I'm just saying, there's there's a lot of guys, there's a lot of gals who just don't look like, they look very generic. Thus, El Generico, who turned into a guy that has won the WWE Universe over to the point where they thought they had that he had a shot at defeating Roman Reigns. Yeah, I, I listen, I, I think we both, all three of us would agree that if they gave Cameron Grimes the story on the main roster that they gave him on NXT... He'd probably be one of the more popular superstars in the WWE. That story on NXT was absolutely fantastic, but they never gave any kind of, they just threw him out there. So they, they, that's just throwing somebody in the deep end with sharks. Like, right how up, are you right going to survive? Right off the top of my head, I would have cam like, like I always like to think of these little fun vignettes. This is a la the Otis thing. Could you imagine Cameron Grimes coming in and like, uh, uh, he, he has a crush on Piper Niven, but Chelsea is jealous that Cameron has a crush on Piper as opposed to her. Entertaining stuff like that. It's I, it, it, it's something. And like, you know, Cameron is dating Piper. I'm just using these two because the names just popped up because Piper was, you know, burying me on social media yesterday and we were having fun going back and forth. So I'm just using them as an example. Like, that's like fun. That's entertaining. I loved Otis and Mandy. I loved all that stuff. The 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 comedy relief that they give to to to, to Zawa at times. Man, give the kid a shot to do what he does. I don't know if that shot was ever truly given. Not on the main roster. No, okay. not at all. Yeah. And if you, if you don't have the time, because like there's only so much TV time that could go around, if you're not going to invest the time, then don't call them up. Then keep – I mean, I, that's what I think, but I honestly I don't know how it works within the walls of the WWE. Maybe time is of the essence, and maybe they felt like they gave him enough time. But as we've seen before, that doesn't mean it's the end. Maybe it's a new beginning, and maybe two years from now, we're talking about how Cameron Grimes is back in the WWE. I want to talk more about that.